Reynolds. It's Mr. Ramin Javid. Let's have him come on to the show and yes. have a wonderful conversation with this guy. Hello, Mr. Hello, Hello. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Are you? you doing all right? I've Feeling great? So all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Make yourself feel at home. So first of all, so welcome on to the show. Lovely set. Oh. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> changed some things. Post-holiday decorations. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. That's lovely. That's great. So, Already so. Um, for know, the people who uh, aren't familiar with you, could you please acquaint yourself with the audience? Uh -huh. My name is Ramin Javed. I am American and uh, the head of the uh, American Institute. Interesting. Very yes. cool. American Great. Institute? Yes. So how many years have you been working in Uzbekistan? Oh, two years. Two years? Yes. Two, two years. years. Oh. Where did you work before coming to Uzbekistan? Well, I was, I worked internationally. I usually, for the past 10, 12 years, I work internationally in the Middle East. And, and then, so I was in the U.S. for a few months when, when I finished my contract. And then uh, someone invited me to come here. I came here and I liked it and I stayed. Mm -hmm. What did you like about it? Yeah. Um, I think the opportunities, the, the quieter life, uh, even the, the food is, uh, you know, natural. Everything is natural, as opposed to U.S. with all the hormones and everything else that you see in the West. So everything was good. So I just everything was good, right? Everything was good to me. Oh, and, and yeah. I like internationally working. Oh, you got it. You're so sorry to cut you off. Yes, no, go. So see what's up. good afternoon already. I think so. Hi. It's still warm. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. What's your name? How you doing? Uh, my name is Feruza. Feruza, okay, hi. Feruza. Do you have an answer for our question? Yes, of course. So, Feruza, feel free to tell your answer. Uh, my answer is, it's a, a capital of uh, USA, and it's Washington, D.C. Okay. Washington, B.C. Washington, B.C. Wow. Yeah, B.C. Yes, 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 great. B.C. Okay. B.C. Very good. B.C. So, Feruza, that was an extremely good answer, very accurate answer. Uh, I can't precisely tell you if you answered it correctly or not, sadly. Uh, but at the end of the program, if you watch and if you tune in until the end of the program, they will definitely be sure to let you know if you said, uh, if you answered correctly or not. So thank mm -hmm. you so much for calling. Happy post Navruz and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. So, Mr. Can you, yes, Mr. Ramin David, can you share with us uh, your working experience on behalf of foreign countries? Well, different countries have different psyches. Uh, the work ethics is different. Um, Eastern are a little bit more laid back. Uh, Western are more go-getting, you know, uh, working Bombastic. by the hour, run, run, run kind of thing. So I grew up in New York City. Uh, one of the common things is time is money. So we get paid by the hour, so we have to work fast. So it, it really depends on where you are and what you're doing. And you have to calibrate yourself to that environment. So coming from New York City, you know, working fast, and then coming here, it's a little bit slower. So I need mm. to, I need to slow it down a little bit. Mm. So yeah, different countries and, and the culture is different. The weather is different. Uh, so you have to get used to it. So it, it needs some, uh, you need to recalibrate yourself a little bit, uh -huh. time so to time. With that, you enjoy that, right? Well, I mean, see, there is poetry in everything, hmm. okay? like. Just like the four seasons, you enjoy the summer, you enjoy the winter, you enjoy spring and fall. Each one has its good thing. So, uh, if I didn't like all of that, I would just stay in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. I like the variety, and well, I mean, I have to admit, sometimes it is <laughs> crazy to just how slow this place is. <laughs> but this comes with the territory. Mm. This is what we call price of doing business. Price mm. of doing business. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So price, I mean, anywhere you go, it's price of doing business. You know, if you are a soldier, you know that you're going to get shot at. Mm. If you're a police, the same thing. If you're going on a, 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 on a ship, basically, there might be, you might be drowning oh. <laughs> or not. You know, so you have to understand that this comes with the territory. Mm. That's so, why it's called so uh, price of doing business. So you traveled a lot, right? Well, I've worked up in... I would say about 40 to 50 countries, uh, not worked, uh, lived and stayed and visited, but I worked in 10 countries. countries. You said. Yes. Wow. 40 to 50, yeah, I, I can't really recall, but it's about 40 to 50. Uh -huh. But in 10 countries, I worked. Wow, 10 countries from that? And all over the world, man. Uh, <laughs> wow. Not all over, still, still, you know, I haven't been to Africa in Australia, but yeah. Got two countries left. I mean, that's 90% <laughs> well, of the world. Yeah, there are yeah, continents, but yeah, right. there's plenty of uh, countries in each one. But yeah, each one is. But growing up in New York City is, is very good because everybody comes to New York and you could see all the cultures. 
you could see all the accents and all the flags and, and, and flavors. So it's good. So before you go to a country, you already kind of know the kind of people that are going to be there. So it's an advantage for me. What are some three very popular stereotypes you can tell us about the Big Apple that yeah. a lot of people know about? Oh, I don't know. People <laughs> don't know. Uh, well, um, Big Apple is New York, just for, for people who, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who don't know. Now, um, one, we are tough. Yeah, I heard yeah, that. You know, sure. New York, New Yorkers are tough, so you know you can't mess with New Yorkers. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing, um, and of course, with after September 11 and all of this, but we also help each other mm -hmm. a lot. That's uh, something mm -hmm. that you know, if you stop somebody to ask them for direction, mm -hmm. um, they would just stop and, and tell you where to go and what to do. So mm -hmm. in that sense, um, and uh, we're on the money, run, run, run. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so money. fast, very fast. Yeah, mm -hmm. and of course, New York is called the city that never sleeps. So the subways are run 24 hours, the buses run 24 hours, everything. This city is alive. Wow. Yes, all the time. Anytime you want, there's something you can find. Mm. And it, it may not be shopping for clothes, but everything else is there. Yeah. Food and everything else. Restaurants are open. There is places you can listen to music, like in different hours of the day. Mm. How's the traffic there? Oh, traffic. Because <laughs> we see it in the movies, man. Terrible. It's always congested. It's crazy, <laughs> yes. Um, it, it, it's impossible to, I mean, it, more and more, it just gets more congested. Yeah. And uh, for example, if you want to park in Manhattan, right. one of the five. So impossible. basically for half an hour, they say, first half hour is $35. Just really? for the first half hour. And then, yeah, it's, it's like that. It's like, are you kidding me? So you just pay two two dollars, two fifty, or I don't know what the latest is now in, in a subway, and you just you know go everywhere like that. So New Yorkers usually don't drive, mm -hmm. unless it's a taxi or something like that, or people are passing by or something else. But you know we usually don't have cars because mm -hmm. we just use a public transportation unless we have to go out. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Just walking yeah. right. Uh, when you tell you told one word, which is restaurant, and you remind me one question. Uh, which is my favorite question. So you have been in uh, very uh, variety countries, right? So what is your favorite food that you ate from mm. other countries? You know, something else about New York, New York pizza is one of the top. Uh, like we, we say New York pizza. pizza is a top pizza. That's huh. what we say. But of course, um, and I'm a kind of a, a pizza connoisseur. I love to go, you know, <laughs> uh, taste different uh, pizzas in different places. Of course, I have to say when I was in Rome, I mean, I love that, that pizza. I mean, it, 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 it is Italian. My I mean, pizza is Italian, so. Italian pizza. Yeah, the so, motherland. But yeah, so yeah, so that was good. And, and second to none is, of course, New York pizza. New York pizza is really good. Describe me this New York pizza. New York pizza is uh, basically the crust the dough, uh -huh. the bread part, uh -huh. is crusty, so it's, it's hard. Okay. Um, they, they make it hard, so that's, and, and then a lot of cheese and thin layer of uh, tomato, sauce tomato sauce with some herbs and spices. Wow. So it really, yeah, it really depends, and also, you know, where to go, but generally everywhere you go, there are New York pizzas, New York pizza. Wow. Yeah. So I, I want to try it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I don't know if you can get uh, New York pizza here. Um, I mean, I tried a couple of places. They, they, the pizza is okay, but it's not New York pizza. Mm -hmm. And uh, a story on, 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 uh, about New York. So basically, mm -hmm. Bill Clinton, when he was president, he was, um, he was just flying someplace. He, 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 they ordered pizza, and they came to JFK, uh -huh. got the pizza, and then went up again <laughs> to do whatever they had to do. Uh -huh. Yes. So New York pizza is like, everybody, let's have New York pizza. So it's New York pizza, it's, it's, it's known. Number one. So New York pizza well, is I mean, just New York pizza, huh? I would say that Italy, and in then America, I would say, I would say yes, in, in the US, yeah, us. Yeah. Have you ever prepared by yourself? I did, but I'm not professional. Yeah. But I do cook. Uh, I have, you know, I've yeah, lived in different bit. places a little bit, yes, but, but, you know, for that you need a little bit more training in how to do it. Mm. But my hamburgers are, are not bad. <laughs> I make good hamburgers. hamburgers. Oh, <laughs> now we got you. So, how do you balance between your work and your family? Well, um, right now here I'm, I'm alone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that's easy. Uh, but I do work a lot because I came here to do business and I need to be successful. So I work until really late and work really hard. Mm -hmm. um, if it's learning something, calling somebody, even like just, just this past weekend I had four different projects I had to do. Wow. 
and uh, I didn't even want to celebrate Nowruz. I was just like I was just at home working, working, working. Um, it is a little bit uh, uh, tough, but the thing is, I do keep a balance between being healthy mm -hmm. uh, and uh, doing the work and going out because I, I give myself time. Like, you know, this much is for work, this much is for exercising, this much is for socializing, and, you know, this is just to relax and just don't do anything and watch a movie or whatever. Well, so then what is your main goal in this life? Well, my main goal would be to be useful. Useful? Yeah, to be useful. Um, to do something that, you know, I, we all could say, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money and I'm not against making a lot of money. That's, that's not, uh, you know, nothing against that. But the thing is, what are you going to make money and what are you going to do with the money? My, my goal never is to just make money. Just it's make what to do with money when I get it. Mm -hmm. Okay, to help people, to better myself, to better people around me and all of that. That's my goal, not really to just so, make money. So, about earning money. What kind of keys can you give to the young generation when it comes to uh, they cannot find some jobs or works and they want to be a successful in their lives in that case? Well, I mean, there are, there are two different paths. One is that you either work for somebody or you work for yourself. Yeah. So you have to decide what kind of person you want to be on that end. The second thing is your work ethics. Mm -hmm. Now, let's just say, and I've, I've hired hundreds of people. Uh, for myself or for the jobs that I was doing, and whatever. And, and mostly it is the attitude. Hmm. If your attitude is just like, like for example, uh, somebody came to me and I said, so why do you want to leave that job to come to work for me? And they're like, well, they're making me work a lot. Hmm. Okay, so you want to work less for me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know That's uh, ironic. Seriously, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> the thing you have to understand is that you need to work extra hard mm -hmm. because if I see you as a young person, if you're like, oh, you know, too much work and all of that, then you are not for my business. Why would I pay you? Mm. You know, so, so you need to understand to work hard and you have to become better. Even if you're there one day, if you're washing dishes, do it correctly. Do it in a way so that it actually, you have a, a, a I, I could see you and say, you know what, you have potentials. Maybe and take you out from dish, dishwashing and put you on something else because I see your dedication. I see that you're working hard. See, that's the thing is you have to show somebody that, you know, uh, your boss or manager, that you are somebody that they want to build a business around. You want to be part of that team. So if you want to be part of the team, you have to make it. You have to make them believe in you. You have to build your skills and build your work ethics. If you do these two, you should be fine. Should be fine. Yes, yes, you should make money for yourself as, as an entrepreneur, or you'd be part of somebody else's team and you help them grow. Mm. Gotcha. Really deeply. I should talk sit. with you for hours, not gonna <laughs> lie. This is yeah. fantastic advice, man. Really cool. Um, so, to kind of tie off the conversation for today, because we're kind of running a little bit low on time, mm -hmm. could you give the youth one recommendation, the number one thing to focus on whenever they're trying to work on self-improvement. What should they do to yes. be more effective in that sphere? Um, schedule your time and know, like you have to have a discipline. I'm not doing this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm not gonna scroll on, on social media. I'm gonna learn something, I'm gonna learn skills and I'm gonna be disciplined. Mm -hmm. That is it, I'm gonna work hard. These are the things that you need to do to get people notice you. Well, it was gotcha. so beautiful. We One of the conversations. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was ecstatic. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you still got a lesson coming up in a couple of I hours. do. A couple <laughs> of minutes. Very good. We're going to wait for that one. Uh, but until then, thank you so much for uh, coming, coming on to have a conversation with us. I had a wonderful time with you. Thank uh, you. That was amazing.